Morning everybody, Todd Metalhead Weatherman here, and boy, oh boy, have we uptrended. In case you didn't see the uh, beginning clip here, three days of enhanced risk, not something you see every day, or very often, period. You might see that once a year, sometimes once every couple of years, but let's go ahead and dive into these here. I don't have a whole lot of time on my hands here because I got to go to work soon. I'm not even dressed yet. It's already 5.30. But this is what we have going on here. Of course, we do know about today's enhanced risk. We talked about it yesterday. Main threat today is hail, but the damaging wind threat, I actually am anticipating that potentially being upgraded to a hatched risk, maybe even a 30% area to go along with that. Tornado threat, maybe a little further to the south towards Waco. We could even get an upgrade over there. So be on the lookout over towards the southern end of this 5% area in the brown here. That's what we talked about last night off YouTube on Discord. So feel free to join that server, by the way. Link will be in the description. But we also have now a day two enhanced risk. Very similar area as we talked about. It's actually going to be a stationary front to the north along with the dry line so there's going to be two points of lift here for this storm system to get going you need those points of lift for storms to fire so storm initiation will not be too much of an issue here especially as we go forward now the interesting thing the interesting thing to make note of here is looking at all the hazard types here not really a surprise to see that 30 percent hatch risk with hail but now we have a 30 percent wind threat to go along with it and then we look to the tornado threat 10% hatched risk, which includes parts of central Louisiana here from Alexandria all the way back towards Lufkin now. So that tornado threat does migrate a little bit further to the east here. Then on day three, already a hatched risk once again. I do think this will be a continuation of all the hazards being possible and maybe the tornado threat being just as high as day two. There is a 30% hatched risk already. We'll have to see if this ends up extending outside of those boundaries into the 15%. And then as we go through days four through eight, as we know, there is a slight risk already in effect for day four, which would be Thursday. But now we have the introduction of a secondary slight risk over towards the Ohio Valley once again. The Ohio Valley has been a hot spot this year, unfortunately. So... We've done this drill before. We're going to probably have to do it again. Sorry for some of you guys that are getting tired of it over here towards Ohio. Just uh, do just do me a favor. Stay weather aware, okay? Because storms are not playing around here. That being said, we're going to keep this ball rolling. All right, so here we are looking at our model data here. Of course, we're going to start from the upper levels and work our way down here. Typically, we usually will look at the 500. It's exactly what the case is going to be here, but we're going to put this into a loop. This is what we have going on here. Trough ejection comes into play here. Neutral to maybe even negatively tilted trough comes into play here. And with these winds trying to shift to the west here, along with the winds towards the lower levels and the surface pushing north to east, all hazards are possible here. You can almost see it with the evidence of divergence here where you're seeing these little purple indexes start to end up being spread apart a little bit that's an indication of air rushing out instead of in so it's what we typically look for when it comes to thunderstorm development so this is a key signal that we have potential for severe weather for not just monday and tuesday but also wednesday afternoon here fortunately this model only goes up to 60 hours so we can't get a great view of wednesday hence why i was saying that we're going to end up having to go into Wednesday a little bit later. I'll do that during the stream today, which I do intend to go live, of course. And then we'll try and see if we can't catch this on Tuesday morning as well to update things. But this is what we're looking at, like at the 500 millibar region here. We can translate a little bit further down to the mid levels of the atmosphere. We're gonna look at 700. 
and we're going to throw that into a loop as well. And what you're mainly going to be looking for are little ripples in these contour lines like this. These are our short waves. They're sources of lift towards the mid to lower levels of the atmosphere. Important when it comes to severe weather and tornado genesis. And there's some pretty impressive uh, short waves in here, actually. The more aggressive the uh, contour line is looking, the stronger the short wave typically is. Like something like this right here is technically a short wave. But whenever you have short waves with the wind profile like this over towards this region, definitely can lead to a little bit more trouble here. And remember, this is also important because this is going to be over an area where we're anticipating severe weather. So they're just kind of, it's just more or less kind of backing up the hypothesis if you're into science. So that's pretty much what we have going on on Monday. And then we'll end up seeing that persist as we go into Tuesday here. You can almost even see it just by putting it in motion. Just how impressive these short waves are going to be over the next couple of days. So like I said, severe weather seems almost like a shoe in, but as we know, there's always fail parameters with all, with all uh, risk. So with that being said, we'll still have to take it with a grain of salt, but the probability for severe weather is pretty daggone high. Then of course, always when you look at severe weather, especially for tornado threats, you have to look at that low level jet. Have to see how this ramps up throughout the day. And really, like I said, the time frame for this picking up is really gonna be more so towards OOZ and then heading into tomorrow. It's going to be in the late afternoon, probably about the same time frame. Then heading into Wednesday, we see plenty of low level jets still present as we get into the early afternoon hours. So, like I said, I think all three days we could see some tornadic development. Just how much is still to be seen is still yet to be seen or to be determined, so to speak. Can't really speak. <laughs> but that being said, it does look like it could be a dangerous few days ahead here for sure. Going to roll forward here and we're going to look at our dew point, our moisture return, so to speak, as well as our moist sector. And considering the fact that we got a wind source that's going almost north to or south to north here, we're going to have plenty of Gulf of Mexico moisture pumping into our severe weather areas here. You can see those 60 degree dew points running pretty rampant here all the way from Texas to even towards Virginia at this point. So and then even if we look at Wednesday afternoon here, you try you start to see some of those 60 degree dew points maybe sneak up towards Ohio here. So like I said, we could see a couple of points on Wednesday with the severe weather set up there as well. You can also see the warm sector here on the bottom left corner based off of our temperature map here. It's coinciding almost perfectly with our moisture source here. So what we're, what's important about that is the fact that usually when you have warm surface temperatures, an abundant moist sector, and usually some good lift, you'll see some pretty impressive instability values. We're gonna look at a particular level of the atmosphere here, the zero to three kilometer range. So we're gonna be looking basically from the low levels all the way to the mid levels. And those indicators in the red are, are letting us know that there is a impressive amount of cape in the this particular level of the atmosphere. This is what we call three cape here. So the zero to three cape is actually a little bit less than what the overall mixed layer is supposed to be. Usually with the mixed layer, you will have higher numbers in the 2000s. With zero to three, you kind of look for numbers closer to 100 and above. And we see that in abundance here. In fact, there are even some areas that hit close to 200. So very explosive environment towards the surface level or the surface to mid levels as far as instability is concerned. And we'll even see this being prevalent in the mixed layer itself. If we look at the mixed layer, when we start to get in those yellows, that's 2000 joules per kilogram. Could even be potential for some areas to hit 3000 joules per kilogram as well. And then of course, as we go forward towards Wednesday, while the instability will be lacking towards the afternoon, it will, I do anticipate it picking up as time goes on here. So this is what we're looking at 48 hours. We're going to switch over to the NAM here in the next little bit, but this is what the HRRR is showing me. And then of course, we also have to look at the significant tornado parameter due to that heightened threat here. Now keep in mind, we have to look at this area for whoever sees thunderstorms. 
if you see your area with increased cape or increased significant tornado parameter with no thunderstorms it's pretty much meaningless at this point but this is what we have going on this evening here and it looks like the time frame has shifted just slightly now we're now more so looking right at sunset towards this region and we not surprising that we with those heightened parameters we have that significant tornado threat pds tornado is the hazard type at this time don't be alarmed by this if you live in this region because this is not a guarantee but this is looking at what the environment could do with, with what i'm seeing here based on the hodiograph here definitely looks like it could verify the hodiograph looks really good from our zero to three range we talk about that a lot when it comes to severe weather and then also storm relative felicities look good i'm going to start nerding out here in a second i'm going to snap myself out of that but if i'm looking at all the parameters here like the lift index which really the threshold number is negative four <clears throat> any um lower or more negative integers like six seven eight and beyond is pretty daggone good when it comes to tornadic development also the lapse rates are pretty good pretty good especially the freezing point but everything looks like it's kind of checking out here. Like I said, a lot of energy in the atmosphere indicated by the surface cape over 2000. Like I said, this is a pretty ripe environment for storms. And then as we head into the following day, here's that thread over towards Louisiana. We even get higher values to go along with that. So we get a 3.7 on the significant tornado parameter and to no one's surprise, pretty similar look here. Then on top of that, storm relative felicity is pretty high especially towards the surface to one kilometer level which is at 328 the effective inflow is at 617 so that's really impressive as well pretty much a similar story to that last one so like i said dangerous days could be possible here especially over the course of the next couple of days of course as we know we can't really get a great look at wednesday so we're just going to try to do the best that we can with what we have available but across the board here, this is what we have going on here with the NAM 3 kilometer. Pretty much a similar deal. Slightly more aggressive off to the west with those uh, significant tornado parameters here. But I do think that over towards the South Texas border with Mexico, not sure if that will verify or not. Really depends on how that dry line will set up as we go forward. But as we get into Tuesday, Numbers are actually a little bit less with the NAM 3 kilometer, but nonetheless, pretty much a similar deal. We'll even go ahead and click a sounding as proof here. This doesn't show a significant tornado or PDS tornado, but the values are still high. And we're still looking pretty similar in regards to the parameters such as lapse rate, storm alert felicity, lift index, and more. So we'll have to see how this pans out here course this is getting later into the evening those values should be a little bit higher as we get towards OOZ more so than 05 but even then threat is very much palpable at this point and then as we get into the afternoon over towards New Orleans pretty high threat there we'll actually go ahead and take a look at that sounding <coughs> and there you go PDS tour don't like the veer back on this you want to see this kind of pushing more out towards the east here so Got a few questions with that, but as far as the low levels looking, this little loop in the hodiograph is definitely a telling sign, signal right there, but pretty much same old story there. And then on top of that, increased instability as well, nearly 4,000 joules per kilogram surface cape here. So like I said, very busy times ahead here for us on the channel here. Like I said, make sure you have that bell on so that way we're, you're notified of whenever we go live, any forecast video, and more. So here is a look at our shower and storm activity as we get throughout today. Here's when the storms start to fire. It would be right around 3 o'clock Eastern, 2 o'clock Central. And things really start to pick up right at about 6 Central time. And as we get later into the evening, we see more convection fire across northern Louisiana. This is going to serve most likely as our confluence band for our storms to fire later in the afternoon. <clears throat> and then after that, here's where things start to pick up over towards Louisiana. A little bit of discrepancy between HRRR and the NAM. Not uncommon to see that. 
but even so i do see the potential for a few discrete supercells here so like i said tuesday could be a pretty big day in its own right here i actually mentioned yesterday that tuesday may even be a bigger day than today but we'll see how things pan out then of course as we head into wednesday here we see a similar threat start to take shape here i do think supercells are likely to fire along this uh, outflow boundary a lot of convection over here so that could be a potential fail parameter with this so we'll have to take it with a grain of salt and see how things pan out from this point that being said hope you guys enjoyed i gotta get ready for work and run here but that being said i'll see you guys later this afternoon it's been tired metalhead weatherman have a good rest of your day